welcome, and those online watching, uh, so glad that you're with us as well. So we have a couple announcements as we get started. Um, we have our Operation Christmas Child boxes out and available to take. Uh, we have some down here in the sanctuary, some at the other end, uh, at the entrance down there. You can take a box and a flyer that goes with it, and you fill out the information on it. Fill the box with all sorts of fun stuff for a boy or girl in the age group that you choose, and then bring those back. And so we have a couple more weeks that we'll be filling those and bringing them in. You can also go to our website and build a box online and uh, choose items and choose gifts to put in there and fill that. And um, if you're not going out or you're staying put, um, you can have that option as well. So you can build that box online. Um, we also have our prayer team that has wanted to just encourage us at this time, uh, this time of year and this time of our season that we're in, to really um, focus on our blessings right now. And, and so we have um, an area here in the sanctuary, one also in the crossroads, and where you can write a little note of gratitude, a little, uh, just a sentence, something that you're thankful for, just taking a moment to recognize um, the blessings that we have. And so fill those out and uh, that you can put it in the little turkey box that's listed back there. But we hope to kind of compile those and put them together and uh, just really uh, be able to focus on giving thanks in this season. So um, you can do that as well. We'll have that out and probably until Thanksgiving for a while at least. So um, I just invite you to bow your heads this morning and let's uh, open with a word of prayer. Father God, um, we thank you this morning um, for today that we can come together, that we can just take a moment to recognize um, the season that we're in where we take uh, a day to remember those that have gone before us that are with you now. And so uh, we ask a blessing um, just of peace and comfort today, especially for those that are here, those that are watching online that they can just feel your arms surrounding them. And we thank you for all of that. And we give you praise and honor. We're going to open up with I will rise.
today is um, a special day, but also an emotional day, I'm sure, um, for all of us as we remember those that we've lost in our congregation, but just loved ones um, in our life as well. And this next song that we're going to sing here this morning is just um, really a reminder of when we have those moments where we feel so alone, that we feel like there's nobody there with us, God is there, and he is our protector, and he is watching over us, and he is our comforter, and he is going to surround you. And so we're going to um, just continue to worship with protector. I come out of agreement with the lie that you have left me on my own. I am not alone. I come out of agreement with the word. Come into agreement with the truth that you are who you say you are. I can trust your heart. I come into agreement with what heaven has declared over my life. Because I know that you fight for. Won't you pray with me? Oh God, you have promised to surround us with your loving arms all the time. No matter what we're going through in days of joy and happiness, as well as in times of struggle and sorrow. And so we thank you for your goodness and your mercy that surrounds us and lifts us up. We pray for each of us in our daily struggles, whatever they may be, that we could reach out to you to rely on your help and your hope. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I will be reading from our scripture lesson from Romans chapter 8, verses 18 through 39. I invite you to hear these words. 
I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Just a little over two years ago, my father-in-law, the Reverend Tracy Bear, died unexpectedly. His heart gave out, and in a moment our lives were turned inside out. Our hearts were broken. Our family formed a, a cocoon of habits and relationships to give ourselves some protection and a safe space in which to grieve. Since that time, it's been a long journey back to a place now where we are beginning to begin to break out and flex our wings again and to feel better once again. I could tell you so many stories about my father-in-law how he proudly served his country in the United States Army, achieving the rank of lieutenant colonel before retiring, how he then worked in the IT field, supervising the work of dozens of programmers, how he went to seminary and was the pastor of two small United Methodist churches in Virginia and in Missouri. My father-in-law, Tracy, loved to fish and build things out of wood. He was a good father, proud grandfather, a beacon in the community, and a light in our family. We miss him every day. Now I know that my family isn't the only family that has experienced grief from a loved one who's died. Some of us, in fact, are here today in worship because of a recent death. And I'm glad that you've joined us. I hope that today our worship and our prayers can be of help. Now all of us know that one day our lives here on earth will end, and we know that this is true of our loved ones as well. Death is a part of life. Although I know that there are days when we wish so deeply that it wasn't. Saying goodbye hurts. There's no way around it when we love a person dearly. When we have to say goodbye, it seems like the lights are dimmed. Our lives are changed and in our grief, we wonder where we can find the hope to go on. It's often said that time heals all wounds. And over the past two years, I've found this to be partially true. On the one hand, the passage of time does help with acute pain, with the rawness of our feelings. But on the other hand, there are often things that remind me, touch points that bring back into my memory that remind me clearly of our loss. Now these memories aren't bad things. In fact, they're serving me well as I recall good days and happy times, and as I take to heart the lessons of character and value that my father-in-law shared with us in his time. But these memories also remind me that I must not rush through this season. They tell me that finding hope, it takes time. And I need to stick with it and stay at it until this hope is ready to be fully born. 
Two years ago, I was one of several who had the opportunity to speak and preach at my father-in-law's funeral service. In preparing my words, I chose the familiar um, verses from Isaiah 40. I can read them again to you now this morning because they call me and they call all of us to hope. And at the same time, I have to admit that these words are a touch point for my memories and my grief. I'm still not able to suggest these verses to families when I work with them on other funerals. So here's Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary. The young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What I'm talking about this morning has been written about by many people. One of the first was psychologist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. In her well-known book on death and dying, she describes the process that we all go through when we grieve, when we face and encounter a loss. I've named these things here on the screen. They are denial and anger, bargaining, depression, and finally, acceptance. Now, some people have called these the stages of grief, and in a good American fashion, they've tried to turn these experiences that we all face into a program with five easy steps. Now, I know that all of us like to have plans in life, so it is tempting to look for a fix-it solution when we encounter a loss. And it's also true that our culture tends to push us just to get over it, to get through our experiences of grief as quickly as possible, to go back to normal, whatever that might be. Now, this is not what Kubler-Ross intended, and I agree with her. When we grieve, we should look for hope, of course, and we should grab hold to those, grab on to those handholds that will take us there. But at the same time, it is not helpful to hurry and to rush our way through. One image that I've found helpful is to picture my feelings as if they were waves. If I'm walking along the shoreline of grief, feelings of sadness or anger or denial will rise up from time to time and hit me. Not at every moment but they occur regularly, and I've come to expect them. Some of these waves are stronger than others. They pull up my footing and try to knock me off balance. But as time has gone by, I've found that these feelings do not knock me down or overwhelm me anymore. They're more like a receding tide. Each time the waves come in, they are a little smaller and a little less intense. And I believe that finally, when the tide has gone out, I will find myself standing on firm ground once more. Well, you can probably see how today's message is a reflection on grief and loss, but friends, it is also more than that. Because my intention is not merely to describe, but to point us in a direction, the direction of hope. Today, as we celebrate All Saints Day, we are observing a remembrance of those who have died and gone on to be fully with God in this past year. But we are also laying claim to hope, a hope that can sustain us no matter what we face in life. And we are offered this hope because of God, God who cares for us and loves us unconditionally, God who promises that this life is not the end, but a prelude to a bright and glorious future. In our lesson, the Apostle Paul writes these words to the Romans, I consider that the sufferings of this present time, they're not worth comparing with the glory that's about to be revealed to us. In this life, Paul knows we will grieve and we will mourn. We will suffer various kinds of trials, but because of God's power, because of God's love expressed through Christ Jesus, we have hope, both in this life and in the life to come. Paul goes on to say that the creation, the world that we live in, it too was subjected to decay and futility. 
not of its own will, but by the will of God, in the hope that one day the creation itself will be renewed and reborn and set free, just as we are as God's children. Now it's true, we may wonder why our loved ones die and have to leave us. But Paul is saying here in this lesson that death and life, they're all part of God's plan. Paul is also saying that one day, just as we are drawn from death to new life, one day the whole of the universe will be redeemed and transformed into a new creation by the power and the love of God. And this, this is why we have reason to hope Even though grief and sadness are part of life, we have hope that God is not finished with us yet. We have faith that God's power is at work in our lives and in this old world to create something new. Now this vision of the future is something for us all to look forward to when it occurs one day in God's time. Now I'm I'm aware that still we are in the here and now. And while we have this future hope, we still must live through all the ups and downs of life with all of its joys and sorrows. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes I find it hard to pray. Especially over these past two years, I found it hard to find the words that could express the depth of our sorrow. And for this reason, I've been trying to practice stillness like the prophet Elijah in 2 Kings who hides in the cave while the storm passes by, I too have been waiting for the storm to pass. I've been waiting for my soul to be quiet enough that I can hear God's still small voice, a voice that can move me and take me in the direction of hope. Now in our lesson, Paul also has something to say about this experience while we wait for the future renewal. Paul writes that not only do we have hope because of who God is, but when we cannot pray, God helps us then as well. In verses 26 and 7 of our lesson, we read, The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought to, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs that are too deep for words. What Paul is saying is that when we struggle, God, Spirit, helps us. When we are weak, God's Spirit lends us strength. When we don't have words to pray, God's Spirit communicates in a language without words the deepest needs and cries of our hearts. And friends, God's Spirit works and moves within us and does these things for us. Why? Because God loves us in a way that is as deep and broad as the ocean. It's for this reason, I believe, we can end this message on an encouraging note. We have hope because of who God is and the support that God offers to us in times of happiness and in times of sorrow. God's Holy Spirit is present in our lives to guide and inspire and correct us, to encourage us, and to help us to pray when all of our words won't come out right. On a day like All Saints Day, It is well and good to acknowledge God's promise of new life when our lives here on earth are done. But I want us also to remember that God's gifts to us and God's gifts for us, they're not merely for the hereafter. They are available to us today, right now, because God's love and grace for us, they are unchanging. Whatever love, whatever mercy we hope to receive one day, they are already ours right here and now because we are God's beloved children. We are God's holy people. Whatever may come our way in this life, I want you to know that God is with us to light a way in our darkness, to lead us through the valley of the shadow of death and out into green pastures, to raise us up on wings like eagles, to raise us up like Christ Jesus, our Lord. God is with us. And that is reason for hope. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, the day in our church calendar on which we pause for a moment to 
Remember those who have gone on from this life into the life to come in this last year. And what we're going to do is thank God for the ways that all these people made a difference in our lives, for the ways that they shared God's love and light and joy with the world around them, and they made a real difference to us. So today is a day of sadness, yes, but it's also a day to be thankful. So what we're going to do is read each name, and there are nine of them. I'm going to read the names, and we will light a candle and ring the bell. And I'd like to invite you, if you are a family member or a close friend of any of these folks, when I read their name, to please stand, and then uh, when the bell is done ringing, you can take your seat again. So we remember today the faithful witness of these saints. Jan Klubine. Reverend Louis Gallo. Gertie Gibson. Phyllis Grant. Ruth Mayberry. Glennis Moore. Kirsten Phillips. Alice Prince. and Marilyn Tanner. Will you bow your heads? Oh God, for your great love that lifts us up, we are most thankful. We pray today for the families, the friends of each of these people your beloved, whom you have brought home. We pray for us here on earth as we suffer various things, our griefs and our sorrows. We ask that you would send your spirit to bind us together, to heal us, to help us stand strong once more. Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us, your constant faithfulness and your mercy. And we pray that you would continue to guide us in our efforts to be faithful, in our efforts to share your love and your grace with the world. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. it will be like when I walk by your side I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me I can only imagine
Brothers and sisters, this week and always, walk in peace, walk in hope, walk with Christ. Amen.